Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship at Living Spirit on this, the first day of spring. Got some nice warm weather here in Minneapolis, and we're grateful for that. We welcome everybody who's here in the building and joining us online. Our call to worship this morning is Come, Come, Everybody Worship. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember to keep the Sabbath day. Take a rest and think of God, put your work away. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember the Lord's unending care. Reaching out to love and help people everywhere. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember your blessings great and small. Give to God an offering, show your thanks for all. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember how Jesus long ago taught us how to talk to God, something we should know. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember that God is like a light, showing you the way to go, ever burning bright. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer or song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Spirit, I adore you. Lay my life before you, how I love you, Spirit, I adore you, lay my life before you, how I love you. Welcome to Living Spirit. For those that are here and for those that are online streaming, I am Pastor Moore. I am the residing pastor here. At this time, we have a video from Esther that we're going to take a look at here during our children's message. Good morning, church. Uh, so I am going to be doing children's church online today, and we are going to be talking about, we're going to be doing a continuation of last week's message but before we jump into that, um, someone asked me a question about what uh, the eggs, why eggs were used as representation for Easter. And I didn't have an answer for that um, then, but I do have an answer for that now. Um, so from research, I've learned that East, I mean, eggs are used for uh, as a symbol because it represents resurrection. And that's one of the main themes of Easter. So now going into Passover, um, I'm going to touch on something that was previously spoken on by uh, Pastor Sean. It was, I don't know if you guys remember, it was, but it was about washing feet. So um, what I am, the message for today is Jesus as a, a servant king. 
and I'm just going to go and jump right in it, right, right into it. It's um, John chapter 13, verse 1 to 6. And it says, Before the festival of Passover, Jesus knew that his time had come to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them fully. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. The devil had already provoked Judas, Simon Escariot's son, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew the Father had given everything into his hand and that he had come from Jesus and was returning that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the table and took off his robe. Picking up a linen towel, he tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet, trying them with the towel he was wearing. When Jesus came to Simon Peter, Peter said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? So, this is the, uh, this, this is the sermon, well, this is the message for today. Um, I want you all to think about this scripture and next week when we um, meet, I want you guys to tell me what you think this means and how this relates to Jesus as a servant king. Um, I also wanted to let you guys know that we are going to be doing Easter baskets this year. And I know that Pastor Sean and I were talking about doing an Easter um, egg hunt for like the children and families. Uh, so once again, if you guys have any ideas or any suggestions about anything, feel free to shoot me an email um, and we can talk about it more. And I will see you guys next week to... Uh, talk about this scripture. Bye-bye. Amen. So I'm going to start off by giving us the mission, or not a mission statement, but we're going, yeah, the mission statement. So I'm going to say the mission statement here. Uh, so here it is. Living spirit is sharing God's abundant love by pursuing justice, practicing generosity, and supporting each other in faith. Amen? All right. So it's good to see you guys this morning. It's the first day of spring. Right, Julie? There it is, right? 
Well, good. I mean, we need some folks to be really happy and joyous about the first day of spring. Amen? Amen. Right. Amen. There it is. We're all here. Fantastic. So uh, as, as I'm looking at what we're going to do here, there's multiple things going through my mind, and I'm going to share them with you in time. The first thing is, our, after church, we're going to do this, this meeting on, on Easter. And I've been thinking about it over and over again, and we're going to have the meeting, but we're going to dedicate the whole entire month of April to Easter. Amen? Looking at what it means and everything else. So we're going to put the sermon series on hold, you know, how to recover creation and just look at Easter. Fantastic? Amen. Okay, now we're going to look at the, the scripture reading for today. Yes? Okay, it comes from Ephesians 22, or 20, uh, Ephesians 4, 20 through, 22 through 24. Here it is. Change the former way of life that was a part of the person you once were. Corrupted and deceitful. These are our kingdom values here. Instead, renew the thinking of your mind by your spirit. Close yourself with the new person created according to God's image in justice and holiness, which is, again, kingdom values. Amen? So you hear Paul here talking about how to engage fully being new. And how do you do so? You do so through renewing your true identity. How do you get to your true identity? Well, a major part of this has to do with our safety. And I was talking about safety last time, and we're going to cover a little bit of safety as we move in to our true identity. Number one, I want to start off by reading a little excerpt from you from the book called The Creative Way. This is an artist's journey on how to be more creative. It says here, early in our creative recovery... Self-doubt can lure and self-sabotage us, right? It says here that uh, our recovery depends a great deal on our, our, our ability to engage in ourselves, which is, do we have self-doubt? And, and you have self-doubt, and it says here, by poisonous playmates, right? If we have playmates that are poisonous, and here's the number one thing it says here, our creative protective parent, that's us, we must learn from a place of self and safe companions. We need to have safe companions. Toxic playmates can capture our artist growth. So hanging around with people that are toxic can literally capture that. Not surprising that most of our poisonous playmates dislike our recovery to our creativity. It threatens them. See, when you are in a creative place, and you start doing things differently, trying to recreate or to recapture your, uh, your, your self-identity, your true identity, there will be people that won't like that. Now, we see this all the time in the, the recovery community, AA, NA, those, to where someone's like, I can't go out with you anymore because of this thing. Take that same thing here. We can't hang out anymore, or we need to change our conversations about this particular thing because this is harmful to me. Amen? Psalms 37, 7 says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. See, there's safety in the Lord. But again, it goes back to, is the church a safe place? Right? You can say, oh, you can have safety in the Lord, but his house isn't safe. How's that sound? That doesn't sound correct, right? So we are the hands and feet of God. So if it's going to be safe with Christ, it needs to be safe where? In this house. So safety is an important thing. Amen? So how do you identify yourself? What is identity? It is who and what a person thinks, what a person is, or what a thing is. Your identity, uh, it says here, will define who you are, and how you define others, how I define myself, and how I define you. So how you define yourself will greatly determine how you define other things around you. Amen? Our identity is based upon a couple of things. Our experiences, our physical environment, the place that we're in, and also our community, which we can call that a safe place. Amen? We need to have a safe place. 
Once you can answer the question, who am I? You begin to then answer, what is my authentic voice? But again, there's hope. Let's say you don't like yourself. I don't like me. Okay, got it. You can change. The word here is metanoia, which is a spiritual conversion. A spiritual conversion. Well, I, this thing about me, I don't like. I know I don't like it, so you can then change it. Again, step one in the recovery model is admit you are powerless over the thing that controls you. Step two is seek out a greater power. Amen? A safe place. Can we choose to do so? They, see, your true identity is a gift from God. See, once you give up yourself and let Christ in, you take upon his likeness, which means his joy becomes your joy. Amen? His love becomes our love. His peace becomes our peace. His strength becomes our strength. This is the beauty of letting what's inside come out. Again, what your authentic voice is the best you have to offer. And a major part of the best you have to offer is the environment you come from. Right? When I was a kid, I knew when I was in the wrong. My mother, my grandfather, my grandmother would say, Boy, have you forgotten who you are? You can't be Sean because Sean doesn't act that way. Because the last thing more means you don't do things like that. It was a constant reminder, you know better than that. Amen? We are citizens of the kingdom. 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. I'm owned by God. Amen. As a result, you can show others goodness of God, for he has called you out of the darkness into a wonderful light. You can depend upon me. Amen. Can I depend upon you? Can you depend on someone else? See, coming in here means it's safe. You can depend upon me. And again, going back to last week, uh, there is the bishop who literally said, he didn't know whether or not the church was a safe place because of how hypocritical it was. That's nothing new, yes? Because Jesus said the same thing about the Pharisees. You're not safe because you demand things that you won't do, amen? Are we that kind of a church? I'd like to think not. What does it mean to put your identity in Christ? What does that mean? 2 Corinthians 5.17 gives an answer. Tell us, anyone who belongs to Christ becomes a new person. The old is gone, the new life begins. I can tell you this here now. Self-care always starts in the new. Once again, self-care always starts in the new. You can't have self-care in the past. You can't say, I'm going to go back and do that. You can't because you can't go back. But number one, newness is the beginning of recovery. What can I do new? What new steps, what new behavior, what new tools would I use to deconstruct the old to move to the new? Amen? See, there is this self-care part. And again, we all know this because you all come from families. Right? If your family is loving and nurturing, it gives you room and space to unfold. Unfold. Also, we have that video of the unfolding flower. Alice, okay, as soon as I'm done, I want to show you a video of what I mean. Right? It's, it's time lapse of flowers unfolding and, and, and the beauty of that. But that beautiful thing takes place by nurturing it in good soil. It takes time. And again, if you're not a safe place, then people don't get to unfold and unwrap the fullness. And again, there's one video, one part, where this flower begins to unfold, and then there's these seeds. It's the seed that can be planted to grow other things again and again and again. You need to be able to unfold, but you need a safe environment. So we like to talk about uh, the church needs to grow, we need more people, and I agree with that. The question first becomes, is my house worthy to have you in it? 
don't have a clean house? And I don't mean like clean as in things on the floor, but I mean clean in here. Can you come in right where you are and be loved? Because again, as you look at Christ loving people right where they were, I can't find a story in all of Scripture where people were forced into following Jesus. You can drag, come on, you're going to come with me. I'll put you in a head hole. Come on, we're going to go. Not one time. But those are choice. Come as you are. Once you come in, then that's a different story. Right? Once you're a part of the family of God, you take up on kingdom values. There are, there are no kind of kingdom values, kind of not kingdom values. I'm kind of going to adhere to the fruits of the Spirit and kind of not going to. Either you do or you don't. See, God has no grandkids. You might have some grandkids. You might have grandkids, but God has no grandkids. You're either a child of God or not. Grandparents are awesome, aren't they? Here's some Mountain Dew. Here's a puppy. Go home. Here's two puppies. Here's some Mountain Dew and a sugar cookie. Go home. You get to do all the fun stuff as a grandparent. But a parent is different. God has no grandkids. You're either a child of God or you are not. So our, our true identity is found in our true spirituality. They go hand in hand. Right? And this hand in hand is the foundation. It gets birthed out of a safe place. So any place that's safe, Burst this out of it. What does that look like? Number one, when you have a spiritual awakening that leads to your true identity, it will change your attitude. A different attitude will happen. Right? You will literally take upon the mind of Christ. Again, his glory becomes your glory. His peace becomes your peace. So again, it goes back to sponge work. Take a, a sponge and dip it in juice. Put it on the counter. Come back and squeeze it. What comes out of it? Juice. Take a sponge, dip it in milk, put it on the counter, go. Come back, squeeze it. What comes out? Milk. If what's in you is what's in Christ, when the world comes and begins to squeeze on you, what comes out? Christ. Yeah, okay. So again, that's the issue here. Number two, you have a personality change. There's this idea that you can't teach a dog, an old dog, new tricks. I find that highly unlikely. And if it is likely, it only attached to canines and not humans. Because anyone can change at any given time. Can you not have a different heart reaction at any given time? Can't you? I have a hard heart and then it changes. The very last breath could have changed. There's a story of these three dudes hanging on a cross. One dude's like, you know what? This guy hasn't done anything wrong. Hey, when you go to the other side, don't forget me. He goes, Brother Gary, tell you what. Right here, right now, at this very second, when I, you will be with me in paradise. At any given time, it can change. Amen? So um, I'm too old to change. No. Willingness is not, wanting, is not the difference of not wanting to change. Amen? Number two, you'll have an, an improved look on life. You'll be able to see things differently when you are firing through uh, the ways of Christ, as in a new creation, a new creative way of engaging in reality. You have a, uh, an increased ability to share and feel your emotions, to share your feelings and your emotions. If you're in a safe place, you can say, here's, here's what I'm thinking, here's what I feel. See, when you're in a safe place, you can say things that might be not correct, because again, as you're working through Christ, you may say this, and okay, I understand the safe place. You can tell a person it's not safe as it, in an open format. Well, if I say something, someone's going to say this to me, and I don't want that to be said to me. Someone's going to be rude and disrespectful or be condescending or be snarky. I don't need that and want that because I'm fragile. We're all fragile, right? Some of us are fragile, and we don't say nothing. Other of us are fragile, and they get upset and agitated and say something. You hurt my feelings, so I'm going to hurt yours back. Number uh, the last one, there's an, over, uh, an overwhelming desire to improve one's well-being. See, when you're in a safe place, you, you want to do well. 
Right? You want to do well for your community, for your organization, for your church. Amen? Now, there are probably several ways to get this. I'm not going to say there aren't. There are several ways. But for this sermon series, we're looking at the recovery model, the AA, the 12 steps. And we're not looking at the 12 steps as for recovering from addiction. We're looking at the 12 steps AA recovery for a multitude of things. What can I recover? What's been lost? The two things we've dealt with, number one, is your safety. How do I recover a sense of safety? Number two, out of that comes identity. Safe place breeds safe identities. Amen? So number one, within the 12 steps, or a spiritual understanding of the 12 steps, number one, name the sickness. Are you bold enough to name the sickness? I am powerless to control this. Step one. I mean, everyone in AA, hi, I'm Frank. I'm an alcoholic. Hello, Frank. I mean, that's it. Step one is, here's my problem, and I can't control it. Now, again, I'm going to go back to what I did in my research. Again, you, you know the story. I said, Here, here's what I'm going to, here's what I want to present and show. They're like, yeah, we get it. We get it. We understand it. But people that you're talking to, they're not going to get it. I mean, they're just not going to get it or understand it. Because you need to first admit there's a problem. See, if you can admit there's a problem, you, you admit there's a way out of it. We have to admit where we're strong and where we're weak at. Amen? Number two, name the healer. Name the healer or the engine of change. Are you sick? Do you need help? Somewhere, some famous guy said, I didn't come for uh, the healthy. I come for the sick. The sick. If you're healthy, you don't need a doctor. If you're sick, you need a doctor. Amen? I was looking up and researching church girl. I always do, I, for like hobbies. Who has like weird hobbies? I have a weird hobby of looking up church growth and church decline. And it's like, that's weird. Well, it, uh, this is my weirdness. So again, I was looking up at Barna, and Barna is a research facility, and all they do is Christian research. And I looked up, what are the major reasons for church closure? Why do they close? Number one reason. This is the number one reason. Research right here by Barna. If you don't believe me, look it up. Number one reason is uh, churches uh, refuse to admit they are sick. They refuse to admit there's a problem there. Number two, the magic bullet or magic pastor. The problem is you, Sean. You're the problem. What's going on there? You're not the right guy for the fix. We had, we've had the right guy, the right woman. It would change like that. The magic bullet. Number three, we are or we fail to accept responsibility. It's broken. Who did it? I, I, I don't know. One of the most frustrating things in my house is that if I know I didn't do it and just didn't do it, like, who broke that? I don't know. I mean, you don't know. There's only two of you in here. One of you did it. You know, you don't know. Uh, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. Like, uh, you don't, you refuse to accept responsibility. Number four, not wanting to change. You just don't want to change. I've seen this play out in two different churches. I've seen it play, I've, I was literally there and I've seen it play out where eventually it got to where we don't really want to change because it's just too much work. Got it. We should have known that maybe eight months ago then we'd have did something different. Yes? Number five, we're inward focused. Just eyeballs. Uh, Jessica's dad, who's a pastor, says inward eyeballs. We're focused on what goes on inside only. And number six, and I've always said this, nostalgia, the good old days. Remember the good old days when things were just booming and great and everything else? We just go back to the good old days. Try to go back one hour from now. And I don't mean like daylight savings time. I mean try to actually go back an hour in time and see how it gets you. For the most part, because I don't feel safe, the only way that I can actually make myself, my, my environment safe is to make other people feel unsafe. See, if you don't have Christ in you, the only way to have a safe environment is to make it unsafe for other people. You kind of map out your area and go, this is my area. I'm going to fortitude. I'm going to put cameras. I'm going to do security. I'm going to get dogs. And I'm going to do, ah, ah, stay away. Oh, that's my stuff. 
But the only way for me to truly be safe is for me to control my environment, which is interesting because Christ said the only way to truly have peace is to let it all go. Let it go. You want a life? Let your life go. That seems weird. That's the way it is, yes? Also, step one in the AA steps, okay? I need to recover a sense of security and safety. So I must recover my true identity. Who am I truly at the core of who I am? Which takes work. We need to take time to work on this. But it starts with being in a safe environment. Uh, last, uh, yesterday we had our leadership meeting and I was discussing about creating a safe space. Right? We're going to start doing two things. We're going to start having those on the leadership team take a bigger active role in making sure that this is a safe environment and we're going to teach from the bottom about what it means uh, for there to be safety. That way we can have more creative juices flowing. Right? We want to be safe. Don't you want to have a safe place? Right? You want to have a safe place? Right? Cooking bacon can be hazardous to your health, yes. Again, popping grease on you, whatever else. Cooking bacon with no clothes on can be very hazardous to your health. Yes? Right? Right? We, we want to be able to cook bacon or cook whatever and not have grease pop on us. Yes? We need a safe place. And again, it's going to take some time. Right? It's going to take some time. And it's going to take some real energy because, again, what I find safe, you may not find safe. You may not, so we have to have a collective safety, which means we need to be mindful of what we say, when we say it, and how we say it. Make sense? And it's not that we, do, we, we don't get to say something, but the again is, how mindful can I be? Again, my job is to serve you. Your job is to serve me. The issue is, are we consuming more than we're producing. And if we're all, everyone's consuming, 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 that's good, because food is good, yes. But if you're not producing, that's a problem, amen? Amen. Uh, so again, we're going to have our, 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 next, our, our next sermon uh, of the series of recovery. But again, come April, we're going to take a break off of recovery and spend the whole entire month on Easter. What does it mean? What does it mean going into Easter? What does that look like? What does Easter look like? And then afterwards, what is Easter afterwards? Because here's the deal. If it's just a one and done, I'm just going to do this one thing, I get all my cultural needs met, all my, all my fixes, and then I go, then how does that help people on the outside? Because again, we know for a fact that Easter and Christmas are the two biggest services which people show up. And out of Easter and Christmas, more will show up on Easter than Christmas. So what are we doing for the folks out there? Amen. Amen. We're now going to hear special music. Amen?
Come on, Crystal, what are you doing? Time's going by. I even looked at him like, what's the deal? And then Brent's like, it's you. I'm like, oh, there it is, it's me. All right, we're going to do prayers of the people. Uh, and Brent's in the back there with the microphone. If there is a shout out, if there's a praise the Lord, there's a prayer, anything that you want to uh, present to the, to, to the body that we can uplift and share, then tell it to Brent. Amen. Amen. Good morning, church, and morning, everybody. 
Um, I'd like to just raise a couple of prayers today. A co-worker of mine um, who has been out this whole week because her dad was moved to hospice because he was dying from esophageal cancer. He passed away this week, so I would really like prayers for Rachel Peterson and her family over the death of, death of her father. And yesterday I stopped in, a friend of mine owns the Finnish Bistro on Como Avenue in St. Paul. And I go there once in a while and say, is Sandra here? No, she's not here. So I haven't seen her for quite some time. Mm. So I was in St. Paul yesterday morning dropping my daughter-in-law for work. So I came back that way. So I went to the bistro hoping to see her and voila, she was there. So prayers for just, uh, I mean, prayers of joys for seeing people that you haven't seen for like three years. And prayers for Sandra because she is gonna be having surgery. She tore a rotator cuff. And she's gonna be having surgery, I think this week. And she can't do anything for the next six weeks. Mm. And she owns this restaurant and she's like, Anyways, prayers for Sandra Weiss for her surgery and her healing because it looks, I mean, it looks like it's going to take a long time. And then I'd also like prayers for my son as he deals with and work helps out his father who is unable to move around, has been sick, he's been in the hospital again. He has a trach and he went to the hospital because he couldn't breathe and they found his trach was dislodged. So they had to help him. So these, so then my son is the one who gets groceries for him, shaves his head, you know, does all these care things for him, takes care of his family and works like two jobs. Um, but just prayers. His dad is not an easy person to work with. And I don't stick my nose in it unless he asks me. So I just want prayers for Alex and his dad to get through all this stuff because it's not easy. Oh, God of all. Here are prayers. I'm not a very good public speaker, but I just want to thank everyone for their prayers and support. This is the best group of people I've come across in a long time. Thank you all. Oh, God of all. By the way, that was pretty good public speaking, by the way. <laughs> I would like prayers for Lisa. Most of you remember Lisa Moore, and Ann and I go to see her every week, and she just suffers with a lot of anxiety. She's, her mind is not all there. Sometimes she can communicate fairly well, but she hallucinates and, and thinks people are coming to get her. So she lives in kind of a state of anxiety. And uh, we go to see her mom, too. Her mom is in the same place at Mount Olivet, so that's really cool. And we can get the two of them together and, and have at least a little peace for her. But prayers for Lisa and all the people in nursing homes when we go, especially when we used to go to Walker, it would just seem so sad. You know, so many people that are lonely, that have no one coming to visit them regularly and have just sit there. Um, so prayers for all in nursing homes. Oh, God of all. So. All right, Jessica wants me to uplift for anybody who has a birthday either today or the month of April to wish them a happy birthday. Amen. Anyone here have a birthday in April? Put your hand up. Ooh. Here we go. Happy we birthday. Happy birthday, everyone. Oh, I'm sorry, it's March. My mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Daylight, Daylight savings time has me screwed up. But I also have a joy this morning, and if I get hit in the head by a shoe, it's from my sister. My sister, as you all heard earlier, is celebrating the first day of spring at 10.33 this morning. So she actually has made treats for fellowship after worship this morning. So please, on your way out, grab one of her fabulous bars. Yes. All the bars, all the bars, and Scotch Rose. I can yell. All the bars and Scotch Rose. All right. Amen. Oh, God of all, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. I found a good note. It 
graduates from Northdale Middle School. Congratulations. A honor roll student, Chase Colonel, our grandson. Fantastic. Speaking of birthdays, last night our family got together to celebrate Deswin's 57th birthday. And we were missing two people, my daughter-in-law, Lori, and our granddaughter, Maddie, because she works nights at Abbott Northwestern, and she just was not up to coming out for dinner last night. But family is wonderful, and we had a good time. So blessed birthdays. Fantastic. A Lord of all. We have one up here. I've got my own mic. Um, <laughs> continued prayers for the teacher strike in Minneapolis. Uh, classes tomorrow are canceled again, and I was supposed to go in and teach tomorrow. I'm grateful for my own self that I don't have to do that, but continued prayers for that strike that they can come to an arrangement that's fair for the teachers, fair for the students, and also, I don't know, I guess reflects the financial uh, reality of the district right now. Oh, God of all. Hear our prayers. Oh, we have a prayer from our stream audience. And this is from Mandy Beardsley. Prayer, prayers for everyone that spring will, be, will bring positive changes, transformation, spiritual renewal, and rebirth. Oh, God of all. Hear our prayers. Amen. I think that's it. Okay, so we're going to move on to recognitions. Here we go. I hear a recognition. I hear a recognition. Who are we going to recognize? There it is. Julie for bringing treats. All right. Who else? For Brent, yes. Jabari for song leader. Woo hoo! Our IT department, all right. Music department, all right. All the worshipers, all right. Yes. So here's the deal. Who doesn't want to hear way to go? Who, wants to, who doesn't want to hear, hey, you did a good job? Hey, and so again, when we do our recognition, just think, hey, you know, this is a good idea. This is good. I want to recognize it, right? Again, so if we're told to be humble, not be prideful, okay. And how about someone else say, hey, you did a good job. Amen? Amen. Now we're going to do our generosity minute. Thank you, Stephanie. Good morning, church. I'm Brent Holmberg, and I serve on the generosity team. And so this morning, I want to speak a little bit about one of our core values, practicing generosity. And one of those is by making sure to say thank you for people who do specific tasks. So I got two groups we're going to recognize this morning and thank you. The first is our money counters. Over the last 18 to 24 months, your offering is still coming in. It comes in different ways. But somebody still has to take time out of their schedule to come over to church. And there always has to be two of them to count and then make the bank deposit. And actually, we have three of them. And they are all in worship with us this morning. So as I read their names, I'll ask them to stand up. And then when I, after I read the third name, we'll give them a round of applause. So Becky Coleman. Bill Jorgensen. And Judy Putz. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you guys for your responsibility and your commitment. All right. Finally, behind me, you see all this fabulous artwork or plants. This is coming from many different people. So I have them alphabetically. I want to 
thank them. But I also want to encourage you, if you want to have something up here, please bring it in and we will put it up. So first we have Addis Beardsley. Then we have John Colonel, Pastor Sean, Crystal, who may have forgotten she drew on our glass, <laughs> Joyce Pruden, who did the wonderful begonia behind us, Judy Putz, who did this beautiful butterfly painting. Then we have Stephanie Richardson, who also drew on our glass. And you guys, you can come up at any time and draw on this. This is a work in progress, and don't be thrown off by the word free. <laughs> and finally, Michael Shoup, who has given us a couple different pictures. We have the Northern Lights, and then we have this wonderful contemporary fuzzy thing. So <laughs> to all of you who have shared with us, the generosity team wants to just say thank you, and let's give them also a round of applause. <laughs> All right, with that, I invite Crystal up to do our announcements and offering. Good morning, church. So, on announcements here. Uh, Pastor Sean has already talked about the Easter planning meeting today after church, so please join us if you can. It's in person. Uh, so, special offering, Minnesota Food Share. In 1982, a group of faith communities, business and food shelves launched an emergency response to raise 200,000 pounds of food to meet increasing demand on food shelves. They raised one 1,830 pounds of food, and what was supposed to be a one-time initiative became a yearly tradition. So throughout March, we'll be taking a special offering to support Minnesota Food Share, which helps stock food pantries around the state, raising money instead of food, allows food shelves to get what they need most, often at a lower prices from wholesale dealers. Please consider contributing to this important event you can choose Minnesota, Minnesota Food Share from the drop-down drop menu if you're giving online or include it on the menu line of your check. So food shelves, I don't know, there's more and more people using them. They really need help. Lenten book study is still going on Thursdays at 6 p.m. online, The Walk, and you, it's from 7 to, to 8 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, and they're all, we're, Everybody's welcome, even if you haven't been on there with them before. There's a oh, there's a video series from a voice behind me. Um, also, if you know anybody at Living Spirit who can't attend in person and doesn't have access or skills to use the internet, internet, we can put recordings of the services on DVD for them to watch at home. Just email the church office to find out more information about it. Uh, office phones, trying to call the church office. The phone has been working only sporadically. <laughs> CenturyLink ordered a new part for us. We're waiting to receive it. In the meantime, if you can't through, get through, please send an email. And then Zoom, Zoom links to join a church gathering on Zoom. Visit livingspiritumc.org slash Zoom and use the, the password hot potatoes. So we're still doing in-person and it's really nice to see people out there today. I mean, I can't see everybody, but everybody here, it's really nice. Um, we have online live streaming and recording, so you can watch our services at any time. You don't have to be there today, but if you are, we're really happy. Uh, offering. So we have three ways to give offering. One, you can mail it to us, 4,500. Um, Blaze, no, Bloomington Avenue, and you could do it online, and it's on your screen, livingspiritumc.org slash give, or you can bring, if you're in service, bring a check or a cash or whatever you're bringing and put it on the plate at the end of the service so the people you saw stand up earlier can count it for us and get it where it belongs. Thank you this morning, and we have a closing song, Faith While Trees Are Still in Blossom. Mm -hmm. 
If all trees are still in blossom, plans the picking of the fruit. Faith can feel the thrill of harvest when the buds begin to sprout. Long before the dawn is breaking, faith anticipates the sun. Faith is eager for the daylight, for the work that must be done. Long before the rains were coming, Noah went and built an ark. Abraham, the lonely migrant, saw the light beyond the dark. Faith of lifted, tamed, and water of the undivided sea, and the people of the Hebrews found the path that set them free. Faith believes that God is faithful, God will be what God will be. Faith accepts the call responding, I am willing, Lord, send me. Amen? It's all right. Amen? All right. So I'm going to ask a favor from everyone here. I'll start with the folks that are online. For the folks that are online, uh, I know Manny's on. I hope she's still there, but I'd like to have some response from you. What's one thing that you need for it to be safe here? One thing that you need from online. What do you need to be safe? Anything, Alice? Well, we'll wait. And as I'm waiting, I want you to think about one thing you need to be safe. What do you need to be safe? Okay. All right, and Mandy responded from online, understanding and non-judgmental listening. What else? Unity. Amen. A warm place to sit in the evening. <coughs> All right. Love all around us and love. Say again. New thoughts and two more. One more. Fantastic. After a lot of deep, deep, deep research, I have a benediction for you. 
<clears throat> it might sound familiar. It just might. You never know. Here it is. Dear God, we want to be a people where we can speak and not have criticism. To be understood with non-judgment listening. We need unity. A warm place to spend the night in the evening. Love all around us. Friendly faces with good body language. Openness to new thoughts and new ways of doing things. Forward thinking and a willingness to accept others. I place upon you. Now go with God. Amen? Amen.